Mick Schumacher is bullish for a stronger 2022, while MotoGP host Qatar has joined the calendar. You can now watch full 24-minute episodes of The Inside Line at our official home on unbeaten.com. Haas F1 rookie Mick Schumacher has high expectations for next season, with the team hoping its 2022 car will enable it to return to the glory days of 2018 when it finished fifth in the standings. Schumacher, who was confirmed in Russia to be staying with Haas into next season, is yet to score points, but said to the Australian Grand Prix podcast in the fast lane, it's not a concern. We have high expectations, obviously, of the next year's campaign and the next year's car, and things looking good. So, you know, we started quite early, I think a bit earlier than everybody else. Obviously had the opportunity to uh, then fully focus on that without having to really think about what we do with this year's car because we just kept it as it was. Schumacher knows F1 is a different beast to the junior categories and is setting himself many challenges, like getting to Q2, which he did in France, while he waits for his shot at the front. I think if you're conscious about what is happening and conscious that this is reality, uh, then obviously it's easy to adapt to it. If, let's say, it was expected for us to be at the front all the time and now we're suddenly at the back, obviously that's not great. MotoGP Circuit Qatar has finally been added to this year's calendar, with the new Middle Eastern race filling the TBC slot on November 21, and a fresh 10-year deal starting from 2023 inked. Qatar has long been associated with the sport's two-wheel counterpart MotoGP, with the Losail International Circuit hosting its season opener in all but one year since 2007, with its first event in 2004 though it's not yet known whether the F1 race will also be held at night. Qatar fills the slot originally vacated by Australia, completing the 22 race calendar and forming a long haul triple header with Mexico and Brazil to get around UK red list quarantine. It also ensures the final three races of the season are in the Middle East with Qatar, which will miss out on a 2022 slot due to its FIFA World Cup hosting duties, followed by Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi. The 5.380 kilometer low sail international circuit has 16 turns, six left and 10 right, for an expected top speed of 320 kilometers per hour, though an average speed of 237 kilometers per hour in qualifying is expected. There is, of course, no lap record set for F1 yet. Just one DRS activation zone is expected on the circuit's one kilometer long main straight. Miami is flat out preparing for its inaugural F1 event with the construction continuing on its international autodrome. But organizers say they're open to hosting other series, including IndyCar and NASCAR. Miami's circuit is being purpose-built for F1 around Hard Rock Stadium, with its May 8 date falling well after NFL commitments with the Dolphins and the Miami Open Tennis Tournament in late March. But the promoters say while fitting in another series is possible, weather ensures there's a limited window to play with. You start getting too far after the race, and it gets real hot in Miami in the summertime said the race's managing partner, Tom Garfinkel. Paul Ricard may drop off the yet-to-be-revealed 2022 calendar, with the French Grand Prix under threat from Italian rival Imola, which is seeking not just to replace it, but to return to F1 on a permanent basis. France rejoined the calendar in 2018 after a decade-long absence, with three events held since then but Imola could be about to swoop in and grab its slot as part of a July triple header with Great Britain and Austria, and four European races held that month. F1 is expected to reveal its 2022 calendar on October 15. Antonio Giovinazzi needs to put together a strong error-free weekend to retain his Alfa Romeo seat into 2022 
says team boss Frederick Vasseur. Alfa Romeo has already confirmed Valtteri Bottas will replace retiring F1 world champion Kimi Raikkonen for next year. But recent rumors have placed Alpine junior Guan Yu Zhou at the top of the squad's shopping list for the second seat. Given the alleged 35 million US dollars he can bring in sponsorship to the Italian branded Swiss squad. But all is not lost for Giovinazzi, says Vasseur, who wants to hold off on making a decision with all options on their side. I'm considering the situation as an opportunity for Antonio, because he's the guy in the car who can show that he can do a good job and can improve, he said. Mercedes' now iconic Black Arrows livery has been a stunning feature of its past two campaigns. But its top racer, Sir Lewis Hamilton, says he'd welcome a return to the silver scheme of the past. Mercedes switched last minute to a black livery on the eve of the 2020 campaign as a strong message of anti-racism in support for Hamilton's own activism, including Black Lives Matter. But Hamilton, who initially requested the change, didn't expect the car to stay black for so long, given the team's silver heritage, and says that the change has done its job. If it goes back, it will be a nice change. It doesn't deter us from the changes that we are making internally as we continue to truly push for diversity, even working with all of our partners, he said. Mercedes has been working on improving diversity within the team via programs like Accelerate 25 and Ignite, both of which seek to recruit from underrepresented groups. Former Renault boss Cyril Abitable could soon be adorned with a tattoo celebrating Daniel Ricciardo's podium at the 2020 Eiffel Grand Prix, with the pair back in contact following his Monza win. Ricardo joined Renault in 2019 after leaving long-term employer Red Bull with the target a podium, and a beatable agreeing to get a tattoo of the Australian's choosing if he achieved it. And while Ricardo did just that at the Nürburgring and again in Imola last year, his switch to McLaren and a beatable's exit from Renault as a transition to Alpine left the tattoo on the back burner. But a beatable congratulated Ricardo on his recent Monza win, paving the way for him to finally fulfill the now famous bet. I'm still very optimistic we could get this done before the year's out, Ricardo said. Otherwise, it's obviously going to drag on and become old news, so I'm determined to make it happen. Mercedes has revealed its weather expert was the key factor in Sir Lewis Hamilton's Russian Grand Prix win. Hamilton chased down race leader McLaren's Lando Norris as rain fell in the closing stages, but the difficult call over whether to pit again for Inters was taken out of the strategist's hands. What they said is they expected more rain before the end of the race, that the track was actually going to get wetter, and that's what tipped the balance to the decision of pitting for the intermediates. The call was the right one and enabled Hamilton to take his 100th win, a record stat that even astounds his silver squad. Lewis has been an unbelievable driver. To break all the records he's broken is something special. For us as part of this team to be involved with 79 of them it, it is amazing. All F1 teams will be forced to run rookie drivers in two FP1 sessions next year with a late change to the sporting regulations, building in more seat time for young driver development. Currently, drivers have limited opportunities to test, with just three days allocated pre-season, along with private runs in three-year-old cars and Pirelli tire testing on 2022 prototypes. But from next season, every team will need to run a rookie driver, one yet to race in a Grand Prix, in two FP1s and McLaren boss Andreas Seidel says it's just what's needed. It's just difficult nowadays to get seating time for these young guys coming out of the junior categories, and therefore it's also our responsibility to provide that, he said.
Thanks for watching. To stay up to speed on all things Formula One, make sure you hit the subscribe button.